Hello and welcome your lovely faces to a brand new 8 things you may or may not know video here on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man Chest. My personal favourite of the entire franchise because, well, it just has everything that I look for in a film. It has comedy, it has romance, and who can forget that epic three-way sword fight between Sparrow, Turner and Norrington on the spinning wheel. To me, that is just absolutely amazing. But before we go into today's video, I do want to thank today's video sponsor, Switchcraft. Switchcraft is a mobile video game which is set out in one of my favourite ways to tell a story, a graphic novel. Graphic novels can draw you in with its easy on the eyes, but the layout and also the brilliant water painting colours that fill the visuals your eyes are feasting on in this particular one. The game is not your ordinary match three type of game either. There is a story running through it, which grips you and makes you want to continue, unlike other match three type of games. You take the part of Bailey Ward, a witch who is set on solving the mystery of her best friend Lydia, who has just disappeared. The story progresses with good writing that will keep any fans of mystery stories filled with a feeling of suspense, like you'd get from watching a great thriller movie or a TV show. To progress with the story, you do need to complete the match three levels, which there are many, many to go through, which will keep you invested in the game and story also. These will also give you enough magic to be able to move further through and get to the bottom of this mystery. For me, I do have my eye on Rosie. I don't know what it is, but I think she is just there and she has something to do with it. I don't know what it is, she just doesn't seem right to me. Let me know who you think it is below. Once you move through the game enough, it turns into a choose your own adventure story. This helps out a lot with moving the plot forward and you also get to meet brand new characters. But beware, your choices do have a big impact on how the story unfolds. Characters may like you more or they may doubt you and get really annoyed. Out of the characters you will meet, there's Gilmore, Dylan and Officer Naomi, just to name but a few, as there are over 85 different characters all with unique and brilliant backgrounds. So download Switchcraft now and start playing the magical mystery. I have left a link in the description box and also as the pinned comment below. So let's move on to the video. When Disneyland opened the original version of Pirates of the Caribbean way back in 1967, I doubt that they had billion dollar franchise on their minds regarding the theme park attraction. Fast forward 36 years and they had a multiple Oscar nominated movie based on the family friendly ride. After the first movie made a ton of pirate booty for them, it was a no brainer that a sequel was going to be made. In 2004, news was made public that Disney were making two sequels, filmed back to back and the storyline would be a coherent across not just the two new movies, but the first would be retroactively turned into the start of a trilogy. Today we're going to take a look at 8 things you may or may not know about Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest. 8. Tim Burton helped design the Flying Dutchman crew. Burton and Depp are one of the most well known pair of friends in Hollywood. They hit it off when Depp was cast as the title character in Edward Scissorhands all the way back in 1989. Something just went off in their minds and they've become the best of friends. They worked on countless movies together, creating some of the best surreal and comedic movies of the 90s and early 2000s. So when Depp came along and asked Burton for a little input, he was happy to help his friend. Even though Burton was hard at work prepping his own movies, the stop motion movie Corpse Bright and the Johnny Depp starring Charlie in a Chocolate Factory, he still found some spare time to design the villainous pirate crew. It's clear that Burton's touch really helped the creative concepts bringing them to life. 7. Groundbreaking Visual Effects One of the first things people bring up about the sequel is how phenomenal the CGI is of the Flying Dutchman crew. Everything looked pristine and real, at a time when CGI was just becoming the norm for Hollywood. When the movies were in the scripting stages, the crew of the Flying Dutchman were originally written as ghosts, as according to folklore. The spirits and phantoms have long been associated with the ship. It wasn't until the director Gore Verbinski who opposed this notion and instead pushed for them to be real members of the crew. For the immaculate CGI used for Davy Jones, one of the first problems the crew had to deal with were his tentacles and by proxy 
the Kraken. It was not easy for the visual effects artists to animate, as there was no real reference for them to draw from. All they had were the actors of the Dutchman in motion capture suits. It wasn't until Hal T. Hickel, the animation director, tasked his team to watch King Kong vs. Godzilla from 1962. The reason behind this recommendation was one scene in particular. The octopus scene. This scene was such an important scene for them to watch, this was used to help them map out and how to create the phenomenal textures and tentacles in the final cut. Bonus fact, the texture on Davy Jones' skin was another unconventional reference point. They got it from a scanned image of a filthy styrofoam coffee cup. 6. Practical over special effects with the first movie being a very closely watched production from high up in the Disney Tower, the board members were very worried over what they were seeing. With Depp acting very flamboyant, the budget was soaring, and it was a pirate movie which up until the Curse of the Black Pill was looked upon as the red-headed stepchild, all due to Cutthroat Island, which is one of the biggest box office bombs ever. Nobody wanted to make a pirate movie. Then the Black Pill was released into the open waters and grossed more than $700 million. A sequel was inevitable. So when Verbinski wanted to leave the island of Tortuga for the sequels, he wanted to do it as much practically as possible. So at the start of pre-production, Gore and his crew flew around the world looking for the perfect locations to film on, no matter how remote. Curse of the Black Pill was filmed entirely on the Caribbean island of St. Vincent, and with the sequels having the budget nearly double of the original, they became an island trotting affair. Gore wanted to shoot practically as much as possible, and this goes from makeup for certain characters like Bootstrap Bill, who was in the makeup chair for four hours at a time, and other members of the Flying Dutchman, all the way up to the main ships for the sequels. For the first movie, the Black Pill wasn't an actual working ship. For the sequels, two full-sized, fully functional Black Pill and the Flying Dutchman were built. The Pill was built over the body of an oil tanker in Bayola Battery, Alabama. Along with these ships being real, Gore also wanted other items to be made for real. For example, the giant wheel used in the phenomenal climatic three-way sword fight between Sparrow, Norrington and Turner was created and the stunt team planned out every nook and cranny to make it look as spectacular as they could. This also went for the bone cages that the crew was captured on the Cannibal Island. 5. The Kraken is not actually pronounced this way. The legend of the giant squid can be traced back to the legend, which originated from supposed sightings of a giant squid which grew up to 50 feet in length. It was first described back at the turn of the 18th century, written down in a travel log belonging to Francis Negri, to which he described the squid in detail and equated it with the Hafgufa, a legendary sea monster of Icelandic origin. To have the creature become part of the pirate's mythos, the screenwriters wanted the biggest legends of the sea to be included as either pets or part of the villainary crew. This is when the name of the beast became an on-film argument between the cast, which was added to show the correct pronunciation. On the DVD commentary, Gore and the rest of the crew, they say the scene in which several people argue over how to pronounce Kraken was added due to an error by Gibb actor Kevin McNally. The word is actually pronounced Kraken, but when McNally initially said the creature's name, he pronounced it Kraken, which caught on with the rest of the cast. I've always used Kraken, and to be honest, it sounds way better than Kraken, so I will most likely be keeping it as Kraken. 4. This is the last movie that ILM won an Oscar for. Industrial Light and Magic, also known as ILM, is the visual effects company that George Lucas created all the way back in May of 1975, when he was about to film the landmark science fiction classic, Star Wars. ILM is the gold standard for visual effects. The majority of movies and TV shows which have visual effects in some way or another has ILM running through its veins. From 1977 with its work on the Star Wars movies, Indiana Jones in the 80s and other effects heavy movies, they have won 16 Oscars for best visual effects with an additional 40 nominations in this category. 
However, before it won for Pirates 2, it was over a decade without a win. This is due to other visual effects companies rising out of the ashes of talent who left ILM to create their own production houses. When Pirates 2 won the Oscar for visual effects, it was hailed as another landmark in the visuals department. Sadly, this is also the last time that ILM won the Oscar for the best visual effects category. 3. The Budget Before The Curse of the Black Pearl ever hit screens and became the beloved franchise starter, pirate movies were considered time and money wasters. This is due to the 1995 movie Cutthroat Island, which is known in Hollywood as one of the worst box office disasters in the history of movies. Made for $98 million, which at the time was considered one of the most expensive movies ever made, Cutthroat Island was supposed to bring the movie company Carolco back from the brink of bankruptcy. They even cancelled a movie called Crusade, which was going to reteam the Hollywood powerhouses of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Paul Verhoeven in an epic medieval battle movie. Due to Cutthroat making less than $10 million worldwide and putting Calco out of business, no one wanted to make a Pirates movie. Then Disney came along. The Curse of the Black Pearl made over $700 million and audiences wanted more. So when Dead Man's Chest was released, the budget came out at $225 million, $100 million more than part one. Depp was able to command a whopping $20 million for each sequel. On Dead Man's Chest, the budget is up on the screen as we previously mentioned that the director wanted the majority of the film to be practical instead of CGI. Well, according to Jack Davenport, who plays James Norrington in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, I had a conversation with the craft service chef about the snack budget. He looked me square in the eye and said, essentially unlimited. I was like, what does that mean? He looked at me and said, I don't know, $2 million? $2 million for snacks. He said yes. That is one hell of a budget just for snacks. Can you imagine the cast and crew walking around with millions of dollars in biscuits and sandwiches? That's just insane. 2. A funny makeup in joke. The makeup designers for the Pirates series is nothing short of spectacular. The practical makeup for Davy Jones' crew, all the way to the little hidden jokes on characters. Nothing is more out there than the little scab that grows over the course of the movies on Jack Sparrow's face. For the first movie, the scab is barely noticeable, but slowly throughout the first movie and its sequels, it gets more obvious. This was first found in Dead Man's Chest, when it was more visible on the man-eating island where Jack is being worshipped. This is actually an in-joke between Johnny Depp and the film's makeup department, who theorise that this scab is actually because Jack has syphilis. The year that the movies are set in, this was a very prevalent disease, to which one theory suggests that it was spread by crew members who picked it up on voyages led by Christopher Columbus. 1. Teodalma's Swamp For Dead Man's Chest, a new character was brought in, Teodalma, played by the fantastic Naomi Harris. The swamp has many easter eggs, and also clues to both this and the third movie's plot. Starting off with a ride into the swamp, it's a recreation of the opening Bayo scene from the ride in Disneyland, complete with the fireflies. Also in this scene, there's a shack by the river which is identical to the shack on the far side of the river at the Disney World ride Jungle Cruise. The eye to detail for the small ride in the sea tier is just spectacular and the crew deserve a round of applause. While the crew are in Tia's shack, just after Sparrow fires the pistol at the monkey, the monkey is let out of its cage and makes a beeline to a room just off to the side. The monkey starts playing with a pair of boots, which again shows how this movie is foreshadowing the coming of Barbosa at the end of this movie. There's more of this foreshadowing when Jack picks up a black hat with a very large feather in it. By the look on Jack's face, he knows who owns this hat and most likely knows that Barbosa is there and is coming back to life. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, you may not have known these facts. For me, one of the ones was number two with the mark on uh, Jack Sparrow's face, which did get me. But we do have that now, ladies and gentlemen, so thank you ever so much for coming along to the video. Please like and subscribe. 
hit the share button as well, leave a comment. Also, don't forget to download Switchcraft. The link is below. I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care.